Hello and welcome to my channel Making Crafts. Today is Freebie Share Saturday and hopefully this will go live on Saturday. If not, we'll have Freebie Share Saturday on Sunday this week. But we're going to do this project together. I really wanted to do this project and I just have been very busy this week so it's kind of a last minute um, time to video it. So I wanted to show you what we're going to be making. We're going to be making some ephemera pieces that we can use on pockets. We can use on tags. We can use different places. You could even use these on cards, I think. So I made some up this week when I was crafting with a friend. And so I just used whatever ephemera, I mean, not ephemera, but um, fussy cuts that I already had from paper packs and um, stickers and things. But today we're going to be making some and we will be using a free digital download. And so I will link to those downloads and I'll show you the downloads in a few minutes. But I wanna go ahead and get started on the project before I pull out the, um, the downloads. So for this project, we are going to be using a lot of scrap papers and things, but if you don't have scrap papers and have some of the things that I have, I'm going to try to give you alternatives. So, so just hang in there with me. And as I work with these products, I'll try to tell you other alternatives that you can make yourself or you can use in place of it things. I wanna to try to keep, the, like I said before, the freebie share Saturdays. I'm trying to keep these projects super inexpensive so that you um, can make these and you don't have to go out and buy supplies to make them. So I have different card stock and scrapbook paper that I'm never gonna use. And so I've decided to pull some of that out. And I even pulled out some colors that I normally wouldn't use. So this is like a bright lime green color. And I wouldn't normally use this, but the way we're gonna use it today, you will not have this bright color as much, you know, it won't be as bright as this and it won't look like this when we get done. And then I even have some of the darker browns and some just different scrapbook papers. And then this is actually scraps that I've pulled out from where I've cut off some pages to make projects. And so it's perfect time to use your scraps as well. So if you don't have any cardstock or scraps like this, you could use um, digitals that you have. You could and use you, you know tear those digitals up. You could use um, magazine pages. You could use book pages that had pictures and things so that you have a little bit of texture in the background. And that'll make sense in just a moment when I um, get started on the project. So to start the project, I'm going to be using some of this paper. And this is a great way to, and I've already decided which one I was gonna use out of the paper pack. This is an old, old paper pack. I don't know how many years old. I don't know if it has the date on it. But this is a very old paper pack and it's back when um, my sister and I used to scrapbook. And so I think this was some of her scrapbook paper that she got rid of. So this is not really anything I would use in a journal or that I know of a journal I'm gonna make and use. So this is a great way to use those papers up. So I can either collage on this side or I'll collage on the back side. So today I'm gonna to collage on the back side because I think that some of these areas, you know, right in here will look good when I um, have it on the back of the ephemera piece so that if you could, if it's gonna be a journaling spot, you can still journal. But a lot of these pieces will be attached to other items anyway. But if you don't like this paper and you don't want that on the back of yours, then just go ahead and collage over the print. But I think this print is messing up my camera as well, so we're gonna collage on the white side so that we don't um, distort the color of the, that the camera's showing. So, and I'll show you the other supplies as we go along, and like I said, I'll give you alternatives for it. So first off, we just wanna start out by collaging our paper. And so I'm just gonna bring in my tearing ruler. So while we discuss the supplies that we need, let's go ahead and um, start collaging. So you're gonna also need like something, some sort of stamps or something for the texture background. So if you don't have any stamps, you can still do this. Like if you had some bubble wrap or if you had um, some bottle caps and I'll show you later. We're just gonna make, we just need something to stamp onto it. So you don't always have to have the same supplies that I have to be able to create these projects. And I'll show you more examples when we get started on the actual stamping, but we're gonna need some um, ink or some sort of, I'm gonna be using my Stabilo, Stabilo, I'm not sure how you say that, woodies today, but, and I'll show you those real quick. But any, um, this is the three-in-one woodies that I'll be using, and that's the name, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce, but any um, watercolor would work, watercolor pencils, um, watercolors, the little cheap watercolors would work, 
or good watercolors, whichever one you want to use. You don't have to have anything expensive, though. That's why I was trying to say with this one, you don't have to have anything expensive. You could even use some acrylic paint if you didn't have um, any inks or the Stabilos or um, so you could, you know, you can buy these at Walmart for less than a dollar a bottle. So you could use those. There's so many options that you could use. So um, I, I'm just trying to give you ideas of things you can use in case you don't have the same supplies in your home. Then you go look around your home and see what you do have and just use what you have because this is a fairly simple project that can use just about, you don't have to follow, you know, exactly. It'll all work out using different types of products. But I thought it was a lot of fun. My friend and I got together this week to craft and we made some of these and we had a lot of fun making them. And I was really happy with what um, it looked like when I got done. So I was trying to figure out how we could do this for Freebie Share Saturday and, you know, make it inexpensive, but also, you know, and have some, freebie fussy cuts is what we're going to have. So the digitals that you're going to be downloading is going to be fussy cuts to decorate our ephemera pieces. And so I found those and I was really happy with the ones I found. So I think they will be good. And let's see here. I'm just So I'm just tearing my paper and I'm trying, it, some of it does have straight edges, but I am trying to tear it down so that what's not on the edge here does not, um, so what's, what is not on the edge has torn edges instead of straight edges. I like torn edges in my collage. You wouldn't even have to use a tearing ruler. If you don't have, well, actually you can use any ruler to tear. You don't have to have a tearing ruler. You can just use a basic school supply ruler. This is one that I bought in the school supplies when they were really cheap, you know, during the back to school. I just turn it upside down like this and tear because it has the cork on the back. But you could use um, that to tear your paper. You could cut it with scissors if you wanted to. If you wanted all your lines to be straight, you could cut it with scissors. You could also just tear it. You could just tear it with your hands. And I was doing that when I first started this project this week. I um, was tearing with my hands, but I just really like using a ruler to tear. So that's why I pulled out my ruler and used it. And you see here, I'm overlapping pieces and that one does have a straight edge, but that's okay. I'm just using that little scrap in here. And I pulled out some book pages. So if you don't have scrapbook paper, find you some book pages. And you could find some children's books. You can find those really cheap sometimes at the thrift stores. And they've got lots of colors in them that could be for the background here instead of, you know, if you don't have the scrapbook paper. And this is old music sheets that I buy. Um, I have a used bookstore that's not far from me. So I like to check out what they have sometimes. And they have these books sometimes and they're very inexpensive so I like to get those to use in my collages. You could use dictionary pages. Old dictionaries work great too. I have some of those and I will be using some dictionary pages today as well. Um, and like I said you can use magazines especially if you had some of the magazines. You could actually cut the fussy cuts out of the magazine if you had some. Um, I don't know if they still make them. I think it was called Bird in Bloom and different like um, that was more of a nature magazine, and then there used to be one that was, um, trying to think now, it was like a, a farming magazine, I can't think what it is now, homesteading magazine, but you know, some of those actually have some really pretty images in them that you could fussy cut out as well, but the colors in the magazine pictures would be great as the background for this, because we are going to, um, you know, apply some things over top of it, so that you're not, all this is not going to be in your face. So whatever you have for your background would be really neat. And I don't have any magazines anymore. I used to have lots of magazines. And then um, I eventually did a big clean out before I started junk journaling. Because if I'd have been junk journaling, I would have never cleaned them out. But before I started junk journaling, I had done a big clean out of my magazines. And I, oh, I even had these nature magazines that was my children's. Those would have been great. The Ranger, I think it's called Ranger Rick. And those would be awesome, too, because you'd have bird images and different um, plants and animal images. But, sadly, I cleaned all those out when my children got too old for them. But those would be great, too. But if you have old magazines stacked up somewhere, those would be great for these types of collages. I don't even get magazines in the mail anymore like I used to. And I get catalogs, so you can use the catalogs, too, for the background texture like I'm doing. But I've tried to go, tried to cut back on like magazines 
and even catalogs that I, you know, that I sign up for because it's just too much coming in all the time and um, making too much trash for me. And then, or I want to keep it and journal with it. And so I have to keep myself limited just a little bit because if I don't, I'm going to wind up with way too much stuff in this house. Probably already do. I, I have been doing some spring cleaning, so overlook my hands. They look so dry and so rough. But it's, I have been doing some cleaning this week, and the cleaners destroy my hands. So I, um, I'm just washing my hands after cleaning. And so my hands are really dry, so overlook my dry hands today. I've been trying to use some of this to help them. That's the only thing that seems to work so far. I've tried some other brands, the Vaseline Intensive Care Lotion and different ones, and nothing seems to be helping, so that's helping some. But I could use some recommendations of what you think would help. It's always, but it's just spring has sprung, and when it gets springtime, I really just get in the mood of wanting to clean out. So I've been trying to do some cleaning. But I also, when I'm cleaning, I want to be crafting, so I don't know if any of you have that problem or not. I have a hard time staying focused because I keep thinking of crafts I want to do and things I want to make, and I don't want to be cleaning house. I want to be making projects, so it's hard to balance it sometimes. So this is just some old cardstock that I had that I wasn't going to use, but I like the texture in the background of this cardstock, so I decided to pull some of it out. I, this is some like was from Michaels, because you know it's white on one side and print on the other, and sometimes I don't know what to do with the um, that paper like that from Michaels, so I had started using it in projects like this. So I'm just kind of scattering about, as you can see. I'm not really having any certain pattern. I'm just trying to add different textures and colors on different parts of my page. I think I'll tear this one down a little bit and put it down here at the bottom. And I am doing rather large collage pieces. And this right now, I know it doesn't look um, like a gorgeous collage, but I really love it when we get done. So try to stick stick with me and follow through with follow along with this project, and I think you'll like it when I get done. And I'm trying to get my 12 by 12 in the camera here. Parts of it's getting cut off, so I'm not sure. Let me see if I can get that lined up there. Um, I need some dictionary. I need some book pages and dictionary pages. So I'm just going to grab a... This is... Um, I have no idea what these stories are. This is a book page from the Young Folks Shelf of Books. I thought I had it on camera. There it is. So this is just a book page from that. And then I want to pull some book pages from my dictionary. I already got one pulled out here. I'll just use that one. It was from last week or this week when I was crafting. So I'll just pull that one out too and use it. But this is just adding, like I said, different textures to the background by using the different pages. Well, that one didn't rip along the ruler, but that's okay. This is the very thin one, thin paper. So, so yeah, like for your collage, you don't have to use small pieces. Just use um, some larger pieces, and that way you can get your collage done. Because we're going to cut this up, so you're not going to have, you know, a huge amount of area together. So it really, the whole collage on the page does not have to look great together because it's going to be spaced out. And it's always surprising to me anyway, when you make a collage, you just start putting things down like this and you never know how it's going to turn out. But um, I think collages always turn out so pretty no matter what you do. I've never seen a collage that I didn't like. I love seeing other people's collages. and I think collages are great for backgrounds on ephemera and things like this. I'm just going to turn my fonts all different ways. I'm not going to worry about it being all one direction. I'm going to have different directions. So I am curious if you have been following along with my freebie share Saturdays. Have you had a chance to create any of the projects or use any of the digitals that I have shared? I'm hoping that you are downloading them and getting some use out of them and enjoying them. There are some great products out there digital wise. I didn't really know anything about digitals until, or really didn't know how to use digitals until I went got into junk journaling and then I found digitals and um, I really 
really have enjoyed using them. Now the site we're going to be using today, and I'm going to link you to the to the freebies because the site is so full of um, it is so full of clip art and free images. But the ones today, I found some on there that has the whole sheet of images, so that we don't have to um, go and search and pull off different images for ourselves. Because it's called the Graphics Fairy. I'm sure you've probably heard of it. Now that is one of the first sites that I think I learned about when I was doing digital. So they have a lot of free, um, older digitals, like the it's it's cl older clip art, clip art, excuse me. So it's clip art that's come from older books and different things like that. I think from like advertisements and from I think books and maybe magazines and things. I'm not even sure, but it's it's once it's copyright free now. And so, those are free on there, and I love using those. She also has, the, the site also has a paid subscription part as well, but you, there, is, there are tons of images if you want images where you don't have to pay on the site, and, um, and so, but the premium is really neat because it, she, or I think it's the lady that is over it, um, takes and groups different themes together each week and you get a grouping of images but also there are pages made up that you could go ahead and use in your journal or fussy cuts let me show you the fussy cuts we're going to be downloading today so this is some of them we're going to be downloading so on the site normally you have to download each one but i found this sheet where the owner of the site had put together a whole sheet for us so you could just download it and use it and then this is another one that, another sheet that's been put together that is free to download. And then here are a couple of old book pages that were free to download. And so we're gonna use these as our fussy cuts. So we'll get started on those in a little bit, but I just wanna show those to you. And so I will link below to each individual sheet so that you don't have to search the site because there's so much on that site. It is hard, it would be hard for you to, I think, just go to the site and find that if I just tell you where to go. So I will link below to it, but hopefully you'll hang out with me and finish this project and then you can click on that link and go to the site and download your images and so I think they I can't remember if they were PDFs I think they were they were really easy I just downloaded them and printed them I didn't have to do anything I didn't have to unzip them I didn't there was nothing I really had to do but just download and print so I like things like that too things that are simple I think, oops I'll go ahead and put it there I'm just gonna cover that piece up because it was the same thing there we go, and I am just overlapping a lot. Now some of this is thick cardstock, and some of this is the lighter um, scrapbook paper, the older scrapbook paper. I'm not sure if they, where, what companies still use this weight of paper, but you don't have to use this. Like I said, some of this is thick cardstock, and then others lightweight. Oh, and I was gonna say, I don't think I said this before, but for the background, the background piece we used, if you don't have old um, scrapbook paper, you can just pull out a piece of copy paper and you would just put two pieces side by side so that you made yourself a large enough piece to do this so you can make a bunch up. You honestly wouldn't need the large piece because we're going to cut it up, but if you wanted to do a lot at one time, you could just, you know, lay your two pieces, butt them together, kind of like, kind of like this, just overlap them a little and then collage your pieces on it and you could do the same. So if you just had copy paper, just the simple copy paper that you can buy, you know, at Walmart or um, any any little store that sells school supplies and things like that, you can buy a piece of white paper. And then like this, well, if you didn't have the copy paper, notebook paper, just regular lined notebook paper, if you had some old notebooks laying around, you could use that to glue all your pieces on. So you don't have to have the um, actual scrapbook paper. I'm just trying to use up what I have and trying to um, clean up some because my craft room has gotten so full that I really need to use some of this up and stop getting stuff and use up what I have. And some of it though, you know, papers you just don't, you won't use in your journals or you won't use in your projects because you just, 
it's just papers that you didn't like that was in your pack or it's old papers that you've outgrown. So those is fine to cover up like I'm doing this one or to tear up like this and like we're gonna cover it up enough that I think these are gonna be fine. I don't think that I'll dislike them in a collage because I'm going to be covering it up anyway. So you'll just see it underneath is a little bit of texture. Um, let's see, what else do I want to add? I need a few more things. Maybe I'll just finish up a little bit of this music sheet in the book page. Instead of bringing out more. So that could go. I don't like anything to be next to each other, though. And if you notice, when I started out, I was doing three of each one, and I would scatter it about the page. For me, that's just an easy way to get started, is to just, you know, um, just to do that. To get started, just grab a piece of paper, start tearing, and then just add it, you know, different spots on your collage. And so I, doing it in threes makes it easier for me. So that away, and then I'm, you don't have to have it in three, so I'm gonna come back and put more of those on, but just doing the threes and putting one on each side of the paper like I was doing, that just seems to um, help me to get started with my collage, because sometimes when you have a blank piece of paper, you don't know where to start. So that is a good way to just, just start that way. And then you can come back and like I said, add more of these in. So we just added one there. We're just gonna fill in all the holes real quick, and then we will move on to the next step. And so when you look at these, these are not papers I would normally use. So I'm not, you know, normally when I put a collage together, I'm using all the papers I love. And I'm like, oh, it's so gorgeous. So um, this one is not all the pages that I, papers that I love. So it's a little different, but that's okay because, like I said, we're getting ready to cover it up a lot. So it's going to be, I think it's going to be pretty when we get done. My other one I really loved when I got done. But it is one of those projects where you have to complete the whole process to get to the point where you absolutely love it. Because in some of the stages, it's not as pretty as in other stages. So let me see if I can get this on camera here. I hope I'm on camera enough. Okay, so the next step is we're going to add some color. So I'm going to use my Stabilo um, Woodies 3 and one So these are water. You can like use water on them and they'll spread out. So that's why I'm using them. And so let's go ahead and start adding colors to our collage. So I want to start out by just adding some blues. And it's very simple. It's nothing, you know, no fancy technique. You're just going to scribble. I like to scribble in three different places. I always like doing things in threes. Kind of helps me to balance things out. But like I said, it's not going to be that big a deal because you're going to cut these apart, so it's not going to be together like that. But that's just what helps me to get my mind going on how I want to do this. So I'm just wetting it and just lightening the color up. And, that's, and you can make use any colors that you want. You can think about what journals you are making, what colors are in those, and use the colors that's in your journal. Or if you're just wanting to relax and have fun, just use the colors that you love and just make ephemera. And then maybe later, you can make a journal to match your ephemera. Or you just make up a journal with a mix match of items. Nobody says it has to be a theme or a certain thing, but I always end up having a theme. That's what my friend and I were talking about the other day, is you know when you make a journal, knowing what themes and stuff, I end up, before the journal's done, there is a certain theme, like I seem to use the same thing throughout. But sometimes it's easier if you do think of a theme before Sorry you about that. My camera cut off right in the middle of my conversation, so I'm gonna see if I can remember where I left off. I was talking about themes in journals, and sometimes it is easier to have a theme, so if you think about this is going to be a botanical journal, or this is going to be a butterfly journal, or whatever your theme you want it to be, it makes it easier to, um, Pull things together for that theme, but sometimes you may want to go by a certain colors. But for me, that's harder because then I don't know what ephemera to put with it. You know, like do I do all butterflies? Do I do all flowers? But I do always tend to go to butterflies and flowers. So when I'm making up ephemera like this, I will do some with butterflies, flowers, and birds because those seem to be the um, three things that I use a lot. And I feel like the flowers. Oops, the. Um, Butterflies and the birds can go with just about any style. And so, and then if I'm, if I do know what I'm going to make, if I have any up journal, upcoming journals that I know I'm going to make, then I'll try to make a camera up like this that has some of the either digitals that's from that, um, or paper from that 
theme that I'm going to make the journal with, or just be sure that I'm, if it's like a, if it was going to be a bunny theme, that I make sure I use some bunnies on my ephemera so that I have those to um, use in my journal. But I do like just creating things like this sometimes without thinking ahead about my journals too. So it's really up to you how you want to use this. If you just want to use this as a relaxing craft time, a practice time, and then you may use it later on, you could do that. I think I add a little bit too much brown up there, but it's okay. So I'm just adding this and then I'm just, and I'm not really doing any certain paint. I'm just scrubbing it in, just trying to kind of rub it out so that it doesn't have those lines that I put in. And it does get it pretty wet. You'll have to have a little bit time for this to dry. But we are also going to, before we, um, before we cut it out and do all that, we are going to add some of our decoupage. Like you're gonna seal it with decoupage glue. Now if you don't have decoupage glue, but you do have some school glue, white glue, um, look online. I think there are recipes to use that as decoupage glue. I don't have it right off but that is an alternative to the decoupage glue. But so also for this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out my digitals now that we're gonna to use to cut for our fussy cuts, and I wanna take a look at it and make sure that I am adding some of the colors that um, work with my digitals. So I'm gonna be using some of these, so I just know I need some reds and oranges, and maybe some yellows and browns. And then for these, I see blues, and turquoise greeny colors and some greens. So I'm just looking at that to see what colors. And then here's a lot of greens. So I wanna be sure that I have some of those colors in the background. And I know this right now looks like an absolute mess. And so if you're looking at yours and thinking, there's no way this is gonna turn into anything pretty, then just give it a moment because um, this is one of those projects. It's just one of those projects where you have to give it time and keep working with it because it it does take a little bit of time to come together. And in the end, like the first one I made this week, I was not sure about. I was like, okay, this is a mess. But when you cut it into small pieces for your ephemera, it is so pretty. Each little piece is so pretty. And we do have a few more layers that we're gonna add. So um, the paint is not the only layer. It just seems like, I'm just gonna take a little bit that's left on my brush and just smear it around there. Now let's, um, I like to take and just go along the edge here with different colors. So I'm gonna go brown up here. And so these stabilos, you can take your finger and just smooth them out. So I like to do that some too. It's just go through, find some spots to add it, and just, you know, smooth it out with my finger. I'm just following like some of the lines of the edges of the collage that we had. I'm just going in and just following some of the edges and adding some color there. And like I said, we're gonna chop this up so it's really, it all does not have to look perfect right now. But I wanna add some reds in because several of our Fussy Cuts has reds, so we need some reds somewhere in here. Put on the edge there. We have no idea. It's kind of a surprise when you get done, like where the colors are gonna end up when we cut this apart anyway. So then I'm gonna bring in my blue and do the same thing. I just like um, adding some of this in. Just adds a little bit more texture to it. And you don't have to follow the edge of your collage either. You can just put these just across your paper anywhere. I'm just, I just enjoy following the edge of the collage with it. And I chose these fussy cuts because this one is called Woodland Walk and I think somewhere in the um, in the article that's on the page where she shares this one, I think that it calls it fall, but I didn't see any. For me, that's that looks more summer for my area. In my area, fall is more of, um, you know, oranges and yellows, the leaves change color. So I thought that worked perfect for summer. And then the other one said it was for Easter, but really the only thing that may make you think Easter is the eggs here, but birds, you know, you have birds nests all summer, so, I decided that this would be great for my summer journal, so that's why I'm using that one, this one this week, and making this project, because it will get us some ephemera ready for our summer journals. And you could, you'll see later when we cut these apart, you could also cut these apart in um, larger ways, 
larger pieces and make them pockets. You can make them, um, you know, anything you want. You can make them tags. You could make different things out of them. So they do not have to be, um, they do not have to be the ephemera pieces like I'm doing. You could use this technique for many things. I'm covering up some of that red because I feel like the red is just too, too dark, but it may not be when we get to cutting it apart. So I'm just gonna add a little brown in with my red though to kind of deepen it up some. Okay, so if this looks an absolute mess to you, don't worry, it's, it's going to look better. But if you're not sure about it, you can fast forward and you will see um, what we do to it. And you can fast forward to the end so you can see what it looks like. But for now, I'm going to set this aside and let it dry and then I'm, we'll, I'll show you the next step in just a second. So it's mostly dry now. So what we did the other day when my friend was over and we made these, we just set them out in the sun and then we had lunch and then we came back and got them and they were dry. Well, today it's pouring down rain, so I couldn't do that. So I just used my heat tool to dry it off and it does curl some, even in the sun it didn't. If some of these pieces lift up or you've gotten them wet and um, maybe didn't get enough glue on them, that's okay because we're gonna decoupage it and that'll glue everything right back down. But we're not gonna decoupage it yet. The next step is to add more to the background. So I know this looks like it's, you know, like I said before, you may wanna fast forward if you don't believe that it'll turn out good, but um, I, I will show you a sample that I hadn't cut out from, from the other day. I thought it turned out really pretty. And then the more you cut the pieces apart, you know, the better they actually look. The, you can see just bits and pieces of each thing. So what we're gonna do now is add stamps. But now what if you don't have stamps? What could you use? If you don't have stamps and um, you were doing the background texture, you could add many different things. So I'm going to be using ink pads that are waterproof and my stamps. And I'll use a little bit of acrylic to show you too. But if you don't have ink pads, you could still do this. You could just use acrylic paint. And then you could use things you found around the house. So I'm just gonna use the black archival ink. And this one is the waterproof ink. So when I use my decoupage glue, it won't smear. And then like I said, I'm gonna use my stamps, but I do wanna show you a sample real quick. Here's a piece of scrap paper. I'm gonna put just a little bit of um, black paint on it. And then you can take like a bottle cap. And I'm just gonna smear it around so I can get a little bit of paint on all the edges. And then you can just add some texture to the background just using a bottle cap. So you do not, like I said, I'm trying to make these Saturday projects where you do not have to have a set of craft supplies, because I know now that's a lot of paint there, so let me just twist a little. But I know that a lot of people don't have, um, you know, a lot of craft supplies sometimes when they're first getting started. So that's one thing you could use. You could take bubble wrap, and I don't have any right now, but you could take that and you could press it into it and press it on there. You can also, um, you could use anything that you find around your house with texture. There's texture in a lot of things. When my children were doing printing when they were younger, we would find combs, we would find, um, you could even use coins. You can use all kinds of things to put texture in the background. Now, if you do like me and you get too big of a glob there, I think what I'm gonna do is just try to um, pick that up a little bit, and it's not gonna be a circle, but that's okay. It'll just be a blob on our page, and a blob is okay in the background. And then, let's, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of my stamps in because I get really messy working with paint, so I'm just gonna do some stamps today. So I have all kinds of stamps here, and they've come from different places, and I find ones that have a lot of background stamps. What I call those, it has a lot of texture that it's just, it's made for the background and not for the focal point of a card. And so this one, you can see, it's just like some splatters. And so it's just a background stamp for splatters. And I, this one is a no-name. I'm not sure where I got it. Um, I don't think it's a certain brand. I may, I don't think it came from the Dollar Tree. I am gonna show you some though that I got from the Dollar Tree. They even have stamps at the Dollar Tree and you could use those. And I'm gonna use some of those today in just a second as well. But yeah, don't let not having supplies stop you from crafting because projects like this, you can use just whatever you have around your house. I think I made that one too dark, but that's okay. We're going to cut these apart so it's no big deal. So I'm just starting out first with all my background stamps. And some of them I just use my hands instead of the um, instead of the acrylic block because I just want a part of the stamp on here. I don't want a clear, crisp stamping. And I'm just stamping it randomly around because keep in mind, 
we're going to cut these apart so all these pieces are not going to be together. And then I'm going to pull in, let me show you. This is a stamp set from the Dollar Tree. So it's $1.25, and I've got two of the stamps out right here. So we have a little ladybug, so I thought that would be perfect for this one since I'm going with a summer theme. And so whatever theme you're going with, you could just pull out, you know, stamps for that as well as you, if you have stamps, if you don't, then just make background texture on it. You don't have to have these images. But like I said, the Dollar Tree even has stamps too, so you could use those. Any old stamps would do. So I'm just going, and then I have this B from the Dollar Tree stamp. I thought this B was adorable, so I thought I would add him. I'm trying to figure out. That one didn't show up too good. Oops, it's right on top of the ladybug. Well, it's okay. When we add the um, fussy cuts on it, it'll cover some of it up. And I think I'm going to add in some flowers today. I didn't do that on my other one, but I think I will add in a flower or two. And then I'm going to add in this flower. I don't know what kind of flower it is. Maybe like a daisy. And know that these are not going to show up, you know, clear because we're going to cut them apart. Like I said before, we're going to cut it apart so it doesn't matter if it if you stamp it perfectly or not. And now I'm going to pull in some of my Tim Holtz stamps. And this is the eccentric set. And I'm just going to use some of these numbers and things. I love his stamps for that where they have the different numbers and different little label type things on them. I think that adds a little bit of um, interest to these pieces. If you'll notice, I'm tilting my stamp. I've got it upside down here, sideways, you know, right right side up here. Oops, let me pull that up there for you. So I just do it all different ways around because once you cut these out, you really are not going to have an up or down um, to it because this is just going to be, like I said, the texture for the background. I am adding quite a few background stamps. I may have to... Um, Kind of give it a break now. I think that might be enough. But the next step is splatters. So I'm going to use black and white splatters on mine. So I'm going to stand up for this. Hopefully I'm not too close to the camera. For some reason I feel like I have to stand up to do these splatters. So I'm just going to put a little bit of black paint on my paper and a little bit of white paint. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of water to each one. So we'll get a little bit of water in there. And hopefully I'm on camera enough. I'm running out of room here. I may have to take a break and clean up just to make room to do this. And then I'm just splattering paint all over what we just did. And this is, for me, for some reason, the splattering is so much fun. But you will make a mess, so you may want to put something underneath yours if you're concerned about your table or your counter because it does splatter everywhere. Don't be wearing your best clothes for this one. You want to have some older clothes on because you're going to get splatters all over you. Sometimes I even get splatters on my glasses. But it does wash off. It's acrylic paint so it will wash off. Add a little bit more water. If you're getting where you're not getting good splatters, just add some water to it. You don't want to get too much water in it. I think I may have gotten a little too much, but there. And so there we have the black paint on it. So I'm going to get a different brush. And I'm going to do the white paint. Hopefully my water doesn't have too much black in it that it messes it up. No, it didn't. So there, we're just going to make some splatters with white paint. And I do find that these fan brushes do splatters better if you have one but you don't have to use them. Now you'll notice the white's getting all over my thing because these fan brushes do work good. But there you go, we get all of our white splatters on there too. And now you can see it's very busy. Okay, so now I'm just going to give it a chance to dry, and I'm going to clean up, and I'll be back, right back with you. So our splatters are all dry, so now I'm just going to go through and decoupage the top, and I just like to use this mixed media um, 
it's not a brush actually it's like a rubbery piece here I'm trying to clean the glue off from where I decoupaged the other day see that's the great thing about it the glue will just um, peel right off when you do that so when you use this so I do have this linked in my Amazon um, account like I have a link below it's my affiliate account and it, it's just a link to a way for me to show you what products I use because a lot of people ask me you know what glue did you use or what where did you get such and such that was in the video so I try in each video to put the link below in the description and I've been trying as I'm creating the videos if I use a certain item that I try to link to it in Amazon just so that you can see um, what it is and the brand and everything and also um, when I do that, if you use that affiliate link, if you click on that link and then you purchase through that link or, or you buy anything through that link, um, it does, it's supposed to, I haven't really started using it yet a lot, but it's supposed to give me a little bit of commission, just a little bit of money to help my channel. But um, just every little bit that we YouTubers get to help our channel, because we really don't get paid to do this, so we spend a lot of our money on making these videos. So it is nice if you do use the um, affiliate links for the YouTubers. I have some affiliate links that I use for other YouTubers where I'm not affiliated with those the stores they're affiliated with, so I just use the links so that they get the commission when I'm ordering things from different stores. So that's that's one thing that helps us out. It also helps us out if you will just hit the like button. And if you hadn't subscribed and you enjoy the content, if you want to subscribe, um, that helps us that way. And it helps you because you can click the notification bell and be notified each time we upload a new video. I'm not uploading as much as I was in the past, but I am trying to upload each Tuesday and at least oops, each Saturday. And hopefully I will get time as the summer goes on that I can upload more frequently but that's all the time I have for projects right now so life's a bit busy and I am trying to do some spring cleaning because I have hadn't felt well over the winter and so it's been a long time since I've done a big clean out here so it's time that I do some of that too so I'm trying to do that as well and I also have my Etsy shop, my business that I have to run. The, um, I have, well, one Etsy shop is for my journals and digitals. And then I have also an Etsy shop for my leather making. We make leather bracelets and um, hand stamp jewelry and engraved jewelry, like customized handwriting jewelry. We do different things like that. You can look below in my description at the very bottom of the description has links to my Etsy shops. It also has links to my other accounts like my Instagram and um, my Facebook. So if you wanna follow me on any of those places. So a lot of times I try to post a picture on Instagram of whatever the video is gonna be about before the video comes out or when the video, the day that the video comes out so you'll know that a video is coming out. And I also try to share it on my Facebook page the day that the video comes out but I have to be honest sometimes I forget to put it in those places so it's a few days late when I remember to add them a lot of times I'm lucky I get the video uploaded on time and then I'm just um, totally forget to share it on social media so I try to though eventually as the week goes on I add it on there so that you'll know that I've uploaded a new video and I have a link to the video I love Instagram seeing everybody's crafts. I mainly follow crafters because that's what I like to see is everybody's crafts. And it's all kinds of crafts that I follow on Instagram as well. Okay, I think I've got that covered pretty good. So I'm just trying to get all the edges good, making sure everything is covered. So I'm just gonna let that dry and I'm gonna continue cleaning up my desk because I let my desk, I was cleaning my desk some while the splatters were drying. So I'm gonna let my desk, um, well, I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna clean up my desk while it's drying. And once it's dry, I will be back and we will start decorating. But for, you, for me, it'll be a few minutes, but for you, it's gonna be just a second. The collage piece is dry and I think it looks really good once you decoupage it. For some reason, 
once you seal it up, it seems like it all just blends together. I don't know if you noticed before how it, you can see all the pieces um, kind of still look separated. To me, it's that way anyway in person. I don't know how it's really looking on camera for you, but it kind of all blends good. And I like when you seal it, it kind of gives it a, um, a finish to it. Now, I use the mat. I've already put it up. While this was drawing, I did clean off my desk a little bit. So I've already put it bit up, but I used the Mod Podge, the matte finish. You can get like a gloss finish, but this time I used matte on this one. It's still the matte, I feel like, has enough shine for something like this. So now that it's dry, it's time to cut it apart and see what our pieces look like. Oh, while, um, while it was drying, I also went ahead and fussy cut out from our pages. So now I think what I'll do is I'm gonna come across the top here first and just cut a strip off just kind of look at some of my cutouts and see. I think I want to come down through here because I, I want to fit my larger moths and butterflies. This one's a butterfly and then I have some moths that's larger. And I didn't cut out all the pieces because I thought, well, when we're working on this, if we find that we want a different fussy cut, then I'll cut more out. But I did cut out quite a few. I think we got plenty to work with here. Probably more than I will use. I think I'm gonna cut it right in here. So I'm just cutting a strip off the top. Now you can just decide what size you want your strip to be. And then you can just cut it into, um, I might just cut this into three, third, into third, excuse me. So if it's 12 inches wide, it would be four inches. I think that's what I'll do. If I'm doing my mouth right tonight. Okay, sounds pretty good. It's close, I got it close. It doesn't have to be exact. And so I'm also going, here's one I made earlier. It fell out from behind there. I'm also going to um, use my round punch for some of it. I have my, this is like a corner punch. It takes and clips off the corners, but you could do that with a pair of scissors. You don't have to have this. So like I was saying, my Saturday projects, I wanna be sure that I show you ways to do it or tell you ways to do it. And you can still, if you are just starting out and you don't have a lot of supplies, I want you to be able to do this too. So you can use your scissors and you can just clip the corners on these squares. I'm going to use this. I'm also going to use um, some of them. I'll use my um, corner rounder. Now for th me, I'm not good at cutting the scissors around the corner, but if you can, you could do that. You could actually just leave them like this if you don't have any punches or anything, and um, that would be fine too. So I'm going to take these now, and I'm just going to clip the corners, and I think I'm going to use the medium setting on these, and I really don't know what the sizes are, and it doesn't tell on it. But it just nips the corner just a little bit and it kind of gives it that look of a label is what it makes me think of so i just kind of like that so i could make a few more cut another strip off and that be a um smaller ones make smaller ones so we could do that as well so i could just cut it off the side here and i go about three and a half on that on the width and then we'll just trim them down and I'm just gonna do random. I'm just gonna go through and just cut random sizes. So I got the bigger ones cut out to put my bigger butterflies and my bigger um, moths on. So let's just set this aside here and see. So that one I think would be pretty on there. Oh, and I also brought out my Tim Holtz words, but you, once again, you don't have to go buy words if you can, you know, if you don't have them already in your stock, you could go on your computer and you could um, type up some words and just cut them out of copy paper and just add them to here. You also, another thing you could do is um, if you had a typewriter. I used to typewriter when I was in school. It would be so cool if I had one now because if I had a typewriter, I think it would be really neat to type up the um some words and and cut them out I don't know if that's too big for there but I think that would be really cool to do as well so now it's just laying these out so I try to lay some out before I start gluing so that I kind of get an idea of um, some of my layouts and things that I want to do and then and then I can start gluing everything down and putting words on them that makes it go a little bit faster to when you're decorating kind of do it in Parts. I don't know, kind of like that. And let's see, we got this little round one here. And you can turn these any way you want. Um, I'm just turning whatever way I think it looks good for the, the image that I'm putting on it. I don't know, that one I keep changing my mind how I want to do, but for that one, where's that little mushrooms we had? And so when I did this, I know we have a lot of clip art and you got probably more than you'll need for 
way more than we'll need for this one piece of paper that we made. But the reason I did that was because I know that I love butterflies and mushrooms, but I wanted to be sure that you had a variety of things. So if you wanted to make this project, you didn't have to just do things that I love, you know. There would be a variety for you to work with and to play with to this weekend with this freebie. And then, you know, of course, if you have stuff in your stash, you could do this with stuff that's already in your stash. But for the these freebies, I'm trying to keep in mind that you may not have anything. But I also want you to have be able to just if not have to worry and be able to download something and just craft along with me. So that's why I'm trying to make it where it's super simple. And I hope that you are enjoying these um, freebie share Saturdays. And I would love to hear if you have created any of the projects, you know, that we that I've made or if you've downloaded any of the, the images yet or the um, freebies. So now I'm just gonna start gluing them down and then we're gonna add words to them and then we'll work on some more. But it's really that simple. So I have these completed for the little one inch circles. I forgot to ink around those, but I've just added some little flowers that I had bought. They were from, um, I think Michael's and they're just Christmas flowers, but I used the white ones because I think they can be for year round. And then I, most of these I have dimensional. This one, I tried the first one, I glued it flat. I'm not as crazy about that one, but the rest I didn't glue completely flat. I have those kind of popped up a little bit. So then for the cards that we did together, and I finished up, here are all the little cards we made. And these can be used in so many different ways. And so hopefully I can show you soon how I'm going to be using these. Hopefully I'll get time to craft this week and show you. Oops. So let me um, just lay some of them out so you can see them. I think that they really um, turned out good. I didn't finally add words to all of them because I decided that um, maybe when I'm making the journal, I wanna add something else. I may wanna add a flower or something. So I did not add words to every one of them. And so this one I did a little different. I couldn't figure out an image that I wanted for this shape card and I forgot to round this card too. But I couldn't find out, figure out an image, so I just let it hang off, and then I just trimmed the extra off. I'm not sure how I feel about this one yet, but I did. Um, I just found this one. This was one of the pieces that was left over. I think it's okay, but um, I think it may have been better just to put something smaller on there, but it's still fine. Well, I hope that you all have enjoyed this Freebie Share Saturday, and I hope that you will give this a try, and I hope that you are enjoying this series and that it's helping you to... Um, craft on the weekends and have little projects that you can do that's inexpensive and doesn't require a lot of supplies. I know I used a lot of supplies here, but I didn't go out and buy these things. These are things I've had for years and years and years because some of the um, stamps and things are old. Now, some of them were new. I used some of the Tim Holtz stamps that were new and the Dollar Tree ones were new. Um, but a lot of the things like the corner rounder I used and things, these are things I've had for several years. The punches I've had for a while. And so it takes time to accumulate stuff. So if you're new to crafting, don't stress and think you have to get it all at once. That's why throughout this video, I've tried to tell you other options. If you didn't have the supplies that I had, other options. And I'm sure there's so many more options that I didn't even tell you. So just look around and um, look around your house for ideas and things that you could use if you don't have all the crafting supplies. And, you know, slowly you will build up crafting supplies. If you ever get into crafting, you will build them up but it does take a while because I didn't start out with all of these things. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.